another gauge demo from FIPGages.com. This is another in my series of approach gauges and this is for capital cities and there's just over 180 approaches. So let's get started. On the home page there is a little instruction as to what the button and dials do. So S6 will take you to the approach. The left dial will increase the approach list up and down by one and the right dial will do the approach list up and down plus or minus five. From the home page, the S1 key will take you to the menu and I'll cover that in a minute. But for now, let's go into the gauge itself. Now, you can use the left dial to start moving the list and it will just jump into the list. Using the left dial, you can scroll the list up and down one at a time and using the right dial, you can scroll the list up and down five at a time. Okay, so we'll cover some of the buttons that um, work within the gauge list itself. Now the S6 will take you to the approach that's listed that you have selected. S5 will change the time of day at the location you're going to. So if you're in the UK and it's midday and you go to a location in Australia, then you're going to be finding that you'll be flying at midnight. So this function enables you to set the time of day that you want to be at the location you're going to. And there are various different options. So off will use the local time of the location you're going to. Pressing S5 again will take you to daytime. So it will set the time of day to 12 o'clock at each location. And we also have option of setting it to 1800 night time, that's midnight, and 6 o'clock in the morning. Because I can't send the dusk and dawn to the simulator, I have to specify times, and it may not really be very dusky or dawny, but it's in the vicinity. So these are the options you have for setting the rough time of day um, at the location you're going to go to. I'm going to put out in daytime for now. Now, S4 is the toggle for whether the simulator is in pause or play mode once you relocate. I've just clicked S4 and it's now in pause. I'll click it again, it's now in play. Now, the S2 and S3 buttons will also increase and decrease the airspeed at the start point. Now, you can change this through the menu, but there's a shortcut here for adjusting the speeds. So let's jump into the menu. Okay, so in the menu, we have again the time of day, which you can toggle using the S3 button, similar to doing the S5 while you're in the gauge itself. You have the pause on start approach option here to toggle on and off. And you also have an offset altitude as well, which you can set. So at the moment, the offset is zero. So it's using the pre-programmed altitude set by me in the gauge. But if you find those attitudes a little bit too low or too high for you, you can offset that by setting the attitude here with the right dial. You can also set the airspeed with the left dial here as well. And obviously you need to change this depending on which aircraft you're using. The other function within the menu is the random bank and heading. Now this does what it says. It gives you a slightly random bank and heading from dead straight. Um, now basically you will find that the airplane will be in a slight roll and it'll be pointing off either to the left or to the right just slightly um, and that is uh, varies so sometimes it can be slightly more um, and other times it can be slightly less and also the bank and roller will be independently different as well now i'm going to turn that off for now and return back to the gauge okay so on the main gauge list you have the icao number you have the airport name and location the runway that you're approaching and whether or not there is an ILS frequency at that runway location. If there's a, a black dot, then it basically means there is an ILS there and it will automatically tune the ILS for you as well. Okay, so I'm going to um, create some approaches and I'll show you those in action. Okay, so if you're lucky enough to have the complete additional SPA.next, when you click on the go to location, you'll hear an announcement of the location you're approaching as well. You're not going to hear that on this demo though. Okay, so let's pick a location. Where should we go? Um, Antigua, Barbuda, St. John's. Sounds good. I went there on holiday for my honeymoon. 
so let's hit the go to okay it's um, loading terrain data um, mainly because I've changed the time and it's set to night which I didn't really want but hey let's show you that function I'm gonna pause the simulator and as you can see it's set tonight because I just haven't had the cage set tonight so I'm gonna change that to daytime and I'm gonna run the approach again okay the pause at the start of that was uh, a manual pause but again what we can do is we can set the simulator to pause and we'll start the approach again and you can see that it's now paused so you can just unpause the simulator and then you can carry on on your approach and it's as simple as that so let's go and pick another location uh, where should we go Bolivia and we'll go to the approach and here we are now approaching Bolivia La Paz and we'll just scroll down a few more I'm using the faster scroll and we've got India Delhi and a 75 and we'll go there now I'm not going to show you me landing an airplane at this stage I did that in my UK airports and embarrassed myself enough so I'm not going to waste your time and have you uh, watch me do a terrible landing but hopefully you get the idea of um, what this gauge does for you um, there are customs at the bottom so if we scroll down to the bottom of the list you will see there are some custom entries these will actually use custom variables within spad.next um, it will be documented in the gauge at some point um, and I'm going to do a separate tutorial on how you actually create these custom locations as well okay so that completes the tutorial for the capital cities approach gauge uh, I hope you found it useful if you haven't subscribed please consider doing so and come back and check out some of our other videos thanks for watching bye now Thank you.